Hey folks, today we're talking about needle chest decompression on TACMED TV. Hey folks, Steve with TACMED TV here. Today I am in Litchfield, Kentucky at the uh, Veterans Memorial. This is the first time I've been here and it is absolutely amazing. Uh, if you're ever up this way, this is something you ought to come and check out. I know they would really appreciate it. I would really appreciate it too. But today, um, we are actually going to do something a little bit different. Uh, kind of reminiscent of what we did in the uh, pork shoulder fiasco video. Uh, I've got some pork ribs and we're going to talk about uh, needle chest decompression today and tension pneumothorax a little bit. So that's going to be coming up on TACMED TV. Hey folks, let's get to the meat of today's video and that's going to be tension pneumothorax and needle chest decompression. Okay, I've got a demonstration here I'm going to show you for uh, needle chest decompression that involves a balloon and a set of ribs. Uh, real quick, tension pneumothorax is one of the three big killers in trauma. You've got massive bleeding. Tension pneumothorax is number two and then you've got airway obstruction. So this is something that if it's not treated, it's not taken care of quickly. Uh, can lead to death okay so this is very very important uh, it's a very important skill that you you need to know and it's something that you need to be comfortable with okay don't be don't don't get all squishy about it um, this is something that you just when it's time to do it do it okay so with that being said you want to make sure you've got your equipment together you need uh, an IV catheter I prefer 16 two and a quarter and anything larger than that, okay? Anything smaller than that, um, to me, just is not gonna work as well. The reason being is, even the 16s and the 14s sometimes will clot off, um, and you'll have to do a re-decompression. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but you'll have to do the procedure again um, because that catheter has has gotten clogged off or clotted off or whatever, and you have to re do the procedure so to me the smaller gauge catheters seem to me like there's a, a greater instance of that catheter being crushed or uh, it clotting off because it's just a smaller area that has to, to plug up okay so anyway so we've got uh, uh, our balloon ribs we've got our IV catheter <coughs> and you'll have to forgive me I'm still getting over bronchitis and a sinus infection so I'm doing doing the best I can here. <coughs> All right, I've got my balloon here. One thing that, one more thing I need to talk to you about is you need something for a one-way valve. A lot of people like to use the uh, uh, cut the finger out of a glove to use that as their one-way valve. That's perfectly fine. Uh, as a matter of fact, you, I mean, theoretically, you could use the whole glove. You know, just get on the inside, run your needle through the glove and then make sure your glove is over that uh, over that valve. That works very well. Uh, one thing that I have found that works extraordinarily well are non-lubricated condoms. Yeah, I know, go ahead, laugh, everybody else does. But the fact of the matter is it works like a top, okay? And it, it's, it's an interesting conversation starter when somebody's looking through your kit and going, what are these for? Uh, so anyway, uh, with that being said, let's get into this demonstration, and we'll see if we can do this without uh, without popping anything. You guys have no idea how many balloons I've gone through today. Oh my God. Let's see if this one's going to work. So anyway, when you palpate your site, now you've got two different sites that you can use. You've got the uh, second second intercostal space, mid-axle, or excuse me, mid-clavicular line, Second intercostal space, midclavicular line, which is about right in here. And then you've also got the fifth or sixth intercostal space over here on the midaxillary line. Okay, now depending upon your environment and the situation you're in will determine on which site that you're going to use. Okay, if you're in a warm zone that can go hot at any minute, then you want to go over here. If you're dealing with an officer, um, you know the reason to go over here is to leave their body armor on if you can leave the officer's body armor on I think you're going to be in a lot better shape uh, I think that works a whole lot better 
So with that being said, whichever site you need, make that one work for you, okay? All right, so, but to do this, you find your find your spot. You find get your uh, get your one way valve that you're going to use. All right. Make sure I've got this here. Find your site. Go through that one way valve. Oh, I hope this works. Go through that one way valve. All right, and then you'll go through. All right, we're in. We're gonna have air coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out a little bit. Don't have to roll it out a whole long way for it to do its job, okay? And then remove the catheter, and you all should hear that hiss right now. All right. You all should be able to hear that hiss, okay? And that's how you do it, and that's basically how it's going to happen. And this thing will pop here in just a second. Not sure when, but it will pop. And I'm just waiting, well, maybe it won't. Maybe it's gonna just go down on its own. This will be the first one that hasn't popped. Let me put it that way. So, all right, yeah, it didn't pop. Okay, now one thing, when you when you find your sights and you and you, you make that uh, that puncture with your with your IV catheter, make sure that if you do hit hit a rib you hit a bone make sure you go over top of it okay if you can actually see here well easier said than done this one's kind of in at an angle because when I went in I hit a rib and you just go over top of it okay angle your needle over top of the rib to where you can get into the pleural space all right now the reason you go over the top of the rib and not the underside of the rib is what can y'all tell me Exactly. You've got the veins and arteries run across and the nerves run across the bottom of the ribs. Okay, so if you're going to go, uh, if you hit a, hit, hit a rib, go over the top of it, you'll cause less damage because that's what it's about. We don't want to cause any more harm. We you know, do no harm. We do not want to cause any more problems. So anyway, that's this video. That's this uh, procedure. Um, hope you liked what you saw if you didn't leave me a comment in the section below let me know what I could do better that's how the program that's how the channel gets better all right if you did like what you see uh, let me know hit the like button drop me a comment uh, let me know what you like okay that's 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 how how I'm gonna grow so anyway if you haven't subscribed please think about subscribing I would really appreciate that <clears throat> As a matter of fact, for that reason, I'll put the uh, subscription button, and eh, let's put it over here uh, today, and I'll sprinkle some more videos around. And I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate each and every one of you. And with that being said, my name is Steve with TACMED TV, saying you guys stay safe.